Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are going to work on the Hexagon Baby Blanket by Charity Wyndham, as featured in Loom Knitter Circle magazine. You can use this on any loom. It can be a rectangular loom or it can be a round. The pattern calls for a 36 peg large gauge round loom and using a number five bulky yarn. You can use a worsted weight yarn on a smaller uh, peg, a smaller gauge loom and get a nice size baby blanket. In fact, you can use as many or as little pegs as you'd like and uh, get different varying sizes. You can use this 12 peg one for the sample that I'm going to knit here and it makes a nice 9 to 10 inch uh, washcloth uh, or trivet depending upon the type of uh, yarn you want to use. If you want to use wool or whatever. Today I'm using the um, Wool Ease Thick and Quick from Lion Brand and I'm going to use a 12 peg loom. The things that you're going to need is your yarn, your loom, one stitch marker, uh, your knitting tool, uh, tap, wide eyed tapestry needle, a couple of pieces of scrap yarn, and you're going to use a crochet hook. Now you're not going to use this for much, and we're going to do a really, really simple seaming technique that you're going to want to use over and over again on other projects. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with a slip knot and get your crochet hook out and put that on your crochet hook. And this is going to be, um, sorry I forgot to mention, you need the crochet hook for the cast on. Uh, we're going to um, work in a, um, we're going to work in a direction like this. We are going counterclockwise uh, as far as numbering our pegs go. Now when we cast on, we're going to start on our last peg. On mine, it's peg 12. For you, it may be 36 or 52 or some other number. So um, we're going to uh, chain cast on. So we're going to put the, this on here on your hook and we're going to come around and hook through, come around the last peg and go ahead and come through your slip knot here in the back. Okay. And then put the working strand around the front of the peg and pull through. And on this larger, um, larger gauge, you can even use your fingers. Um, I've done it before. <laughs> so just going to go ahead and pull these on through, get your working yarn. And it's just making a chain. Okay, we are at peg one. We've put this on here and we're wanting to use our stitch marker here. Want one that is open, that opens on one side and you can just pop it on. Um, Charity recommends taking a pencil grip and cutting it thin and then cutting an, an end off of it and it pops on and off these large gauge ones really easily. So whatever works for you, but if you if you have a stitch marker that opens, uh, that's preferable because you're gonna move this around a lot. So um, what we're gonna do is take our working yarn and um, she's updated and amended the pattern and um, we've been working together. So this is something that you may not have seen in the pattern, but um, it'll, it'll add to some finishing technique for you. So we wanna do a half stitch around the first peg and it's just gonna stay here. We're not gonna do much with it. And now we're gonna e-wrap around all the remaining pegs. So your stitch marker is on peg two, leave it there, go all the way around. And then on this last peg, we're gonna go around like an E-wrap, um, but we're not gonna continue. So it's called a half stitch. Now we're going to get our knitting tool and start knitting over. And once you hit 
this second to last peg, of course mine is peg 11, we're gonna knit, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to purl, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we're gonna purl this stitch and um, work our way back. And I'm going to knit that off. I'm gonna work that stitch there and purl. And we'll slow down a purl if you haven't done it before, but you can check out my channel for a slower video. Work the stitch, knit that off there, and then we're going to grab our working strand from below the loop that's on the peg and pull up, pull it off the loom and replace it and snug that up. We're gonna continue going around until we get back to the front um, of our work here. And sometimes I'll do a couple at a time. So you're always working your stitches to the left the way that she has the pattern running. You can go back and forth, but this is a nice way to remember it. And we're gonna be working in short rows and we're gonna continue decreasing as we move around the loom. And so each section in this hexagon is going to get faster and faster, which is really kind of fun. And then you'll finish off one wedge and then move on to the next and it repeats itself. Okay, so we are at the marked peg now. We're going to work that stitch and uh, purl it. Okay, and now that we've done that, we wanna take off our stitch marker here, pop it off and then put it on to the next one. Okay. And then we are going to uh, work around the loom and make a an e wrap around, um, and go from the front to the back, and then go around, and then it has this nice little stitch here. All the way around, knit off on your last stitch and get your working strand in the front so that you can start purling your stitches on the way back. And this little half stitch that we do on this end peg, basically this is a slip stitch because whenever you're working your way back, you're, you're not purling this one. So in fact, you're slipping a stitch or using it as a turning peg, if you've heard those terms before and it will make the outer edge of your blanket. And it has a very nice detail to it. And if you're wondering why I have yarn stuck in the bottom of my loom, it's because it holds the pegs in easier. So we're gonna work the stitch that has the marker on it. Okay, and then we're gonna pick it up and move it over. The stitch marker. And you wrap all the way back to the last peg. It's pretty repetitive, and if you um, if you kind of get the gist now, you're going to keep going until you get to the last two pegs, and there's a little trick on there. And if you don't work them correctly, what happens is is you end up with a circle instead of a hexagon. So if you want a circle, um, then you can skip that section. 
But uh, in order to get the hexagon part, um, well, I'll show you when we get there. Okay, again, work this stitch, knit it over, and purl the one with the marker. So you see how it's stacking up on all the pegs on this side of the marker are not getting worked, but we're leaving, we're leaving these stitches on here. And her pattern is very clever because if you leave it on here, it's an eye-catching way to remember don't do anything yet. You're not finished with the wedge. Um, that's really all it is. So just going to pick up the marker and move it down as soon as you do that. Um, if you move it too soon, um, if you change the rhythm of what you're doing, then it might be a little confusing. Um, so just keep working down in the same way. And when you have three pegs left on your loom, um, so just pause the video and then come back uh, when you have three, the last three pegs left and then we'll pick up and I'll show you this, this special technique. So pause your video and meet us back up. Thanks. Okay, we're back and I have done, um, I, ha I just wrapped these last four pegs and knitted over. And I wanted to bring this in and show you, um, this is a one that I've already made. Uh, this is one section this is what we're working on right now so you start here and then you st you're decreasing um, you're going to have this nice little edge here this is the half stitch so it's going to be like this nice really finished edging so that is what is on your last peg that's coming out of here just wanted you to see that in a nice big piece and see how you get these nice little um, wedges here so we are completing this one and we're going to knit off all the way up to our stitch marker just as before. Go ahead and purl those stitches up to the marker. Okay, and just as you've been doing, go ahead and move the stitch marker over. your last peg and then this one here and purl so I've wrapped uh, I've I purled this last stitch here and now I'm going to e-wrap these last two and if we don't do these last two then what we get is more of a circle. So that's the catch. So if you forget to do those and it becomes a circle, you know why. you want to go back to those last two and make sure. So this happens on every wedge. So now we are going to go across and knit off and purl all of the remaining stitches. So all of these here that we've been previously holding we're going to knit them off and purl. All right, so uh, pause your video as needed again and meet me back up when you get to peg one. And do not purl peg one. We'll see you in a minute. Last couple of pegs here. I'm going to purl the second to last. Technically, this is peg one and two. And knit this off. Okay, we are ready to begin our next wedge. So you should have this little point here. You've got a triangle going on. Take your stitch marker, move it back over to peg two, 
and we're going to start the whole process again. You're going to do the half stitch here and then e-wrap all the way around. And knit that off and purl all the way back. And we'll do the first couple of pegs here, the moving of them, and then you can continue on your second wedge. Coming at the end of this row, and knit off peg two, purl peg two, and we're going to move our stitch marker over to peg three. Okay. And then you just continue as before, e wrap it all the way to the very last peg and then purl back and make sure that your last peg is only a turning peg. The only time you're working this last peg is only for uh, that e-wrapped e stitch. It never gets purled. So, all right, I think you've got this under control. <laughs> if you need to um, obviously pause, but if you need to rewind and do those sections again, Feel free to do those as many times as you need to. Refer to the pattern. It will be below or in a link to Charity's site. Um, Charity, Charity and I had worked on this together, um, trying to do a, a little bit of tweaks and stuff. It's her pattern, and I think it's brilliant. Thank you, Charity, for letting me do this. Um, she actually um, developed this and worked on it in my house during um, several knit nights um, in... Um, in the fall of 2012 and had said hey you know when I get this worked out will you make a video for me and I said well sure <laughs> so and then they featured it in Loom Knitter Circle magazine so I was so proud of her I thought that was great it was her first pattern to write and um, I'm sure that there will be many more to come she's got some very inventive things going on so all right, if you're still tuned in, we'll do one more. So now that I've come to this side here, oops, I'm about to move it before I should. Go ahead and knit that over and purl the peg that has the marker. See, if you move too early, you can get off of your rhythm. And I would suggest that um, if you have to put this project down Try and finish one wedge and knit your way back to the beginning and actually knit off that first beginning peg and then that will help you remember where your spot is. If you don't do that, um, you're in, in jeopardy of maybe adding an extra row. I did that and then I had to pick it up and frog it. So that section because it was too long <clears throat> all right okay pause your video and we'll meet back up and I'll probably show you after I have a few sections going along so that you can see what it looks like thanks okay we're at the halfway point I've done three wedges and I'm back to the beginning here I just want to show you what it looks like coming out okay and if you can't tell from the front side you can just look on the back and see where you've got long rows decreasing down to the short rows and here's your separation between these wedges so you've got one wedge and it comes along here and you can see the short and then you've got your second wedge okay and then this is my third so whenever you have the the other small wedge it looks just like a little bitty triangle it doesn't look as big as this is so we're halfway we're going to do three more wedges and come back and that will be the last thing that we do. 
and then we will do our bind off. We'll see you in a minute. Boom! The magic of YouTube. <laughs> okay, so I have done my three more wedges, and uh, we have uh, we ended up right here. This was the last time that we did it, and normally you would go back here on a purl row, and we're just gonna stop. So this is where we're gonna do our bind off. And in her original pattern, she called for uh, the loose bind off uh, by Jeannie uh, Phillips. And we are going to try uh, something else here. You can use a Kitchener stitch, which works well, but you can also do something else, which I'm gonna show you today, which is a Russian grafting technique. And it's so easy, you would need your crochet hook. And I taught you about getting, I'm gonna move some stuff in here. Uh, some scrap yarn and um, by the way this one I did on this loom and this is uh, two strands of a um, and I'd probably do three but uh, two strands of cotton so you can make a nice little um, dishcloth or um, add a third one and make a nice big uh, trivet or pot holder so there's that but I would get some uh, knitting needles and uh, you can do circular ones so you need uh, either knitting needles and then some scrap uh, scrap yarn um, and then your crochet hook so um, use some needles if you have them and you might want to get ones that have the um, their circular needles on them so <clears throat> we'll get started okay I'm going to show you real quickly uh, this sample right here is showing you a garter stitch and this is um, using the Russian grafting technique on a garter stitch and this is a panel here and this is a panel here and right in the middle is where we've joined it this is one side and this is the other it shows just slightly different here it's sort of a braid and if you look at it here um, it, it basically um, zigzags it back and forth and does a little sort of braid technique here it's this line here. So um, it actually is really, really well hidden. Uh, I want to show you what it looks like on a stockinette. So if you want to use this on something else, uh, it doesn't um, hide as well on the, um, anyway, I did it in one fashion here, which I'm going to show you. And then um, I tried to do it a couple of different ways here just to see if it hid better. But I'll show you what it does look really nice on the reverse. So on a pearl side, it hides really, really well. So if you're showing a bunch of pearls and you want to join it this way, go ahead and try that technique. So um, go ahead and get out your knitting needles. And of course, for this loom, I only need the... Um, uh, this size of needle, but you might want a circular one if you've got a large blanket and And of course, you know use your scrap yarn instead if you don't want to use the needles uh, So we're gonna load these on here. We're gonna go all the way around the loom and pick the stitches up and um, We're going to lift these off and put them on and in fact, I'll show you how to take it off with the um, scrap yarn and then you can load them on your needles uh, if, the, if that's easier. So use your hook and take your yarn and go all the way through. This is called a provisional bind off. Uh, you're not really binding off, but what it allows you to do is hold your stitches in another spot while you're waiting to use it for something else. Um, or graft in this purpose. And the reason why I say use the knitting needles is because, well, at least in this sample here, the yarn is so bulky that um, it actually tries to make the top stitches kind of come undone. Um, just because of the way my stitches are, your might, yours may not do that. almost all the way around the loom to so do all your stitches and if you need to pause your video of course of course do so uh, go ahead and cut your yarn give yourself um, a generous amount maybe a foot or so you probably won't need it but just in case so go ahead and we're going to pull this off of the loom okay pull that tail through and you're done with the loom Here's the what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually work our way from the center to the outside because it has um, a hexagon. I want to make sure that this points outward when I'm done. And um, if 
if uh, you're right-handed or left-handed, you may have to switch how you're holding it. But um, basically, when you load them on the needles, you want to put your, um, your working strand on the opposite side that your hand is using. So like if you're right-handed, you want to put the working strand on your left and uh, vice versa if you're left-handed. Um, but the way we want to work though in the direction is we want to work towards our working yarn. So I'm going to turn this around this direction and I'm going to load it on needles and you can keep your, um, you can keep this scrap yarn on here. So go ahead and just load this through. And if you want to double check and count, we want to make sure that we have the total number of stitches across here. So I've got 12 on mine. Six, nine, 12. All right. And now we're going to load back on our cast on edge. And if you have put some scrap yarn on before, uh, then it may make it easier to pull them on. Um, so we're going to grab another set of needles and loop them on through. So go ahead and do that. And we'll meet back up. So I've got um, my original cast on slip knot. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Don't forget that um, this slip stitch on the outer edge and if you need to examine your edges to make sure that they're facing the right way and that all these strands are running the same direction, then do that. Okay, and, and even if you're not a, you know, a needle knitter, um, don't be afraid of this method. It's actually really easy. The, the, um, the needles are actually just helping you hold the stitches on here. They're not, um, you're not really doing any knitting on here. So um, pick up your crochet hook. I'm gonna use a darker one so you can see it against my table here. Okay, this back stitch here is, is going to be, this back very first stitch is going to be slipped and you just simply put your crochet hook through. All right, now we're going to pull this off the back uh, needles and the very front stitch here, push my needle down, this very front stitch, we're going to put in our, um, our crochet hook knitwise. So we're gonna go right in the front part and through the back, all the way through. And while it's still on the needle, you can go ahead and hook through. All right, so we've got this hook, and then we're going to work this stitch. And if you can't do it, just go ahead and slide it off the needle and do that. So now that you've worked that stitch, you're gonna to go to the back needle. Put your hook through the back, knitwise, same thing, and pull the hook through the front stitch that's already on your hook and then pull it off of this back needle and so you have one stitch remaining on your hook now you can go and now we're gonna go through the front again same thing you're gonna go to the front and you're gonna work this stitch through now if you want you can pull it off of the needle and then work the stitch like this but if you're not very good at holding on to three things at once, then um, I would suggest putting it on the needle and using this as leverage to pull on the stitch for you. So we just did the front, now we're gonna go to the back. We're just working back and forth, that's all we're doing. So again, what I'm doing is you can pull this to the front, that way you can see it, 
and then use it to kind of pull through and leverage it and then just knock it off that needle. All right, let's do that again. We're gonna go to the front. We're gonna stick it in this stitch here and if you need to pull it forward so you can see it and then just pull it on through and you're working the stitch. You're not adding any yarn to do a specific chain or single crochet or anything complicated like that. We're gonna go to the back and do the same thing again and just continue pulling it on through. And to the back. And to the front. And to the back. And to the front. And just to give you an example, okay, so I'm gonna hold on to my stitches and show you. Um, I've had a stitch uh, drop, but see, I've got my um, little safety line on here. So I'm just gonna come back and um, pick up these stitches. And this one, I've kind of split the stitch here. So I'm gonna just loop that back on and then take my needle and go back on here, see? And so I didn't, I didn't, uh, I had no despair here because I didn't lose anything. So now we can hold the stitch again, and I can tell that this is coming from the front. So now I'm ready to go to the back again, and we're going to knit that on through and pull it off the back needle, go to the front needle, and do that. Pull it on through, go to the back, knit that over, go to the front. And you just have to keep sliding these to where it's comfortable for you. And I keep letting them go way forward because I don't want them to come off. Um, I'm going to look at this one because I think that I've split some of my yarn. So I'm going to examine it real quick. Okay. It's better to catch that while you're in the middle of it rather than to go back as then you may actually have to frog that bind off. Okay. Into the back again. And I think you get the idea. So go ahead and pause your video and, um, and complete your stitches and I'll meet you back up when you have two left on there. Okay, I've got um, these three loops here. I've got a front needle and a back needle and then uh, this crochet hook. I've, I've just come from the front so I need to do the back needle. I'm going to work that stitch and um, and it may be loose because that's where your working strand is coming from so you can tighten it now or you can tighten it in a minute. Um, and so I've worked that on through and we can drop this needle here. Just let that go and then now go ahead and pull that through and set your needles down, your other ones down. And now we're going to pull this loop over. Now I've got two strands here. One, one was from our cast on and then one was my working strand. And um, so now that I've actually pulled it through, the one that was the working strand is one that I did right before that. Um, and it's tightening up around this stitch here. So it's sort of tightening up this last uh, join. And then I can uh, pull this through again and then make this completely just finish. So now I've got that nice and pulled pulled tight and I'm gonna use that to um, tuck in and um, I'll, I'll end up finishing that off. And I want you to see where this stitch is. Okay, so this is where we've ended here. Um, this is where your provisional um, bind off was and I'm just leaving these nice and loose on there. You see where this grafting is and um, these are your other wedges here. So this is where your, all your other little wedges are. It hides really nicely. Isn't that great? And then you flip it on the back and it looks like that. And it has just a little bit of a sort of a deeper pocket, but I think it will hide nicely and um, it just depends upon the yarn that you have, um, but it works really well. And um, sorry, you're hearing a jet overhead. <laughs> 
Anyway, so if you like this and you're happy with it, before you start tucking in these tails and everything, go ahead and pull this um, pull this out here. And in fact, if you're not really sure about the type of yarn to use, um, this is actually a nylon. Uh, thread here and it doesn't it just slips right out really easily and it doesn't grab on all these fibers So if you want to use something like that, oh just found something I messed up on um, <laughs> So just pull that right on out But if you weren't happy with it, then you could actually undo it and frog it back and then try the Kitchener stitch So and if you want to try this um, on some scrap pieces like I did You know if you want to try this out first and see how you like this crafting technique then I suggest you do that on a sample. So now you're just gonna weave in your tails. So we're almost done, and then this is that middle section, and all you need to do is take your scrap piece of yarn. So we're just gonna take another piece of yarn and uh, cut it and load it on a needle, on your tapestry needle, and then just weave it into the center and tie it off and close up that middle, and then you will be done. So after you have finished weaving in your ends and your uh, middle part, drawing that section in, you have completed your baby blanket or whatever size you want to make. Remember, just put on a, a flat, make a flat panel and as many pegs as you wish, and you can make it as big or as small as you want and any gauge and just make a small little test swatch and, uh, and test that out with the type of yarn and the loom that you want to use. Thanks for joining us with Good Knit Kisses, and uh, thanks for watching Charity's Hexagon Baby Blanket. Have a great day, and happy looming. Bye-bye.